Conference still going on, and manager Casey Stengel now turns to walk away. The umpires tonight, Tony Vincent is at the plate, Paul Pryor is at first, Augie Donatelli is at second, and Frank Sicuri is at third, and right now the New York Mets are taking the field. Al Jackson has left the dugout and is on his way to the mound. For Jackson, tonight he is making his 32nd start of this season and his 35th appearance. This is his first full season in the Major Leagues. He was up with the Pittsburgh Pirates last year at the end of the season. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Jackson turns to uh, get the dirt smooth out there, dig in a little bit in front of the rubber. Say, fans, did you ever feel you were having a curve thrown at you by your cigarette? That brand you were smoking that tasted okay when you first smoked it, has it ever pulled a change up and begun to taste hot and dry? When that happens, it's time you made a change, a real change. It's time you came up to cool. Tell you something that a lot of smokers have found out. Your cigarette's not tasting cool enough till you come up to cool. Know why? It's because cool's menthol magic actually brightens taste. It's refreshing all day through. You'll feel extra coolness in your throat all day long. Extra coolness no other cigarette can give you. Take it from me, I know. Fans, now's the time to come all the way up to cool. Right now, signal the man with the cigarette tray. Get cool filter kings or cool without filter. Feel that extra coolness in your throat. Now ready to step into the batter's box. He's shortstop Bob Lillis to lead off for the Houston Cole 45s. Lillis has a season's batting average of 248. One home run and 29 runs batted in. One time in his career with the Dodgers, then with the St. Louis Cardinals. Lillis has moved in and taken over the shortstop position for the Colt 45. They began the season with Don Button there. Al Jackson into the windup, and here's the pitch. It is in there for a call, strike one. Again, Jackson is set to work the pitch. It's one out, and there's a pop and the short center coming over is Hickman and Christopher's there and Hickman makes the catch with Christopher coming right in in front of him. And Bob Lillis has popped out the short center field. There's one away and coming up is Joey Amalfitano, the second baseman. When the lineup was posted initially tonight, Johnny Temple was in the lineup at second base and batting second. However, in the Milwaukee series, Temple collided with catcher Joe Torrey and had a knee sort of stove up a little bit. So Harry Kraft sent him up there tonight in batting practice had him work out and uh, then decided he would not play him and inserted Joey Amalfitano here's the pitch in there for a call strike to Joey Amalfitano he came to the major leagues as a bonus player with the New York Giants when they were based here at the polo grounds in New York he's a right hand batter Al Jackson with the pitch it's low for ball Malfitano is hitting 232. He has one home run, 23 runs batted in. He is the second baseman that the Colt 45 started the season with. 
Again, Jackson set to work, and it's a 1-1 pitch swung on. Line down the right field line. This is one hop to the wall, and Christopher comes up with it, relays it in, and holding at second base is Joey Amalfitano. With a double right down the right field line, one short hop to the wall. So the Colt 45s have an extra base hit, putting Amalfitano on second, and Jim Pendleton, the left fielder, is coming up. He's a big right-hand batter, hitting 244. Pendleton has eight home runs and 35 runs battered in. Now Fatano leads off the bag at second base. As Jackson looks in for his sign, has it. Now he's up and into the set position. And the pitch. Fastball inside for ball one. The Mets have Marv Thornberry at first, Sammy Drake at second, Elio Chacon at short, and Felix Mantia at third. Frank Thomas in left, Jim Hickman in center, Joe Christopher in right. Juju Coleman catching, Al Jackson pitching. Charlie Neal is scheduled to have his right hand operated on tomorrow. He has been uh, suffering from tendonitis for quite a while. That pitch is high for ball. It's 2-0. Big Jim Pendleton with a bat cocked, and here's the 2-0 pitch. Swung out and missed. He took a rip. It's 2-1. Pendleton has been used uh, at first base at times during this season by manager Harry Kraft. Incidentally, Cod Deal is coaching at first base tonight, and Lum Harris is around at third. Cod Deal is the pitching coach. Here's a swing and a ground ball over the bag at third. Fielded back in by Mantia. Throws on to first in time. Has a throw back to third. And moving on safely is Joey Malfitano to third base. Pulls up there with two men out now. As Fennelin grounded out from Felix Mantia to Marv Thornberry. That was a ground smash right across the bag. But Mantia got over to backhand it and make the play on. But on the long throw, the minute he cut it loose, Joey Malfitano moved from second to third. Throw back was not in time, and here's the first baseman and left hand batter, Norm Larker, coming up. Larker's hitting 263 with eight home runs and 53 runs batted in. Cold 45 started the season with Larker at first base, and he's been in there most of the time. Pitch is low and away at the ball one. Start of the season, they had Larker at first, and Malfitown at second, and Budden at short, and Aspromani at third. One ball and no strikes to Norm Larker with two men out in the base runner at third and the top half of the first inning of the first game of a twilight doubleheader. Jackson takes a moment again to smooth out the dirt there off to the side of the rubber. He's working with a windup runner on third, two men out. This pitch is swung on and missed. It's one and one. Larker cutting on a high pitch. Larker, of course, was an expansion draft selection of the Colt 45s off the roster of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Jackson works the 1-1 pitch. That hits in the dirt, and it's short out by Choo Choo Coleman. Two balls and one strike. The Dodgers lost two first basemen in the expansion draft. Gil Hodges was selected by the Mets, and Norm Larker was selected by the Colt 45. So the Dodgers in turn install Ron Fairley at first base where he has become a very classy first baseman. There's a high chopper foul right on the plate and off to the right side. Jackson off that mound like a cat over there. In foul territory. He can feel the position uh, as well as any of them. Two and two the count now to Norm Larker. Going back to the bag at third is Joey Amalfitano. Jackson now looking in for his time. Starts the windup for the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled off. The count holds it 2-2. Two two. Nineteen sixty, when Dick Groat won the batting championship of the National League with an average of 325. Larker battling right down to the last day of the season. Larker hit 323 that year. 
knocks him down, and it's three and two. Adam Duncan, he hit the deck on that one. Full count with Carl Warwick on deck. And the payoff pitch. Swung on it to ground ball to second base. Taken by Drake, and he plays it on to Throneberry, and time on the side is retired. Archer grounding out second to first, and in the top half of the first inning, the Colt 45's got no runs on one hit. The double by Amalfitana, no errors, and one left, as Amalfitana died at third. And at the end of one half inning of play, the score is the Houston Colt 45's nothing, and the New York Mets coming up nothing. Well, you've heard that gag about a one-game winning streak, but say, you fans who are smokers, did you ever find you were having a one-puff winning streak with your cigarettes? That brand you've been smoking ever began to taste hot and dry after the first puff? When things are going that way, folks, it's time you made a switch. It's time you changed to cool. Fact is, your cigarette's not tasting cool enough unless you're smoking cool. That's because cool's menthol magic actually brightens taste. It's refreshing all day through. You'll feel extra coolness in your throat all day long. Extra coolness other cigarettes simply can't give you because they just don't have that menthol magic cool's got. So get out of that smoking slump. Come up. All the way up to cool. Get cool filter kings with the pure white filter or cool without filter. Now on with the game. The makers of cool are happy to be a part in bringing you these games all season long. And they especially hope that you're enjoying this one. Up to lead off for the New York Mets is the shortstop, Elio Chacon. Elio has a season's batting average of 241. He has two home runs and 25 runs batted in. He has drawn 63 walks this season. Ken Johnson. Getting set to deliver, and uh, hung his strike down, almost fell off the mound. So he smoothed the dirt out a little bit. Johnson has won six games in the last 15 thus far this season. Now starts to wind up, and the pitch to Elio is in there for a call strike. Johnson's a big fellow. He's six feet, four inches tall, and he weighs 210 pounds. Impressive figure out there on the mound. Again, he starts the big motion and the pitch. It's a breaking ball outside. It's one and one. Last year, Ken Johnson finished the season with the National League winning Cincinnati Reds. He was six and two with the Reds. Provided some very timely victories for them. With Kansas City earlier last season, he won none and lost four. That pitch is in there for a call strike as Elio Chacon bluffs the bunt. It's one and two. Ken Johnson is making his third start against the Mets. He's won one and lost one. On June 12th, he beat the Mets three to two. He went all the way to get a nine-inning victory. There's a swing and a slice foul. In the lower deck and out of play. It's holding at one and two. In that game on June 12th, Ken Johnson struck out nine. June 23rd, he was knocked out in the third inning after lying six hits and seven runs. His last outing was his best of the year. He lost a one nothing heartbreaker to the Dodgers last Wednesday, allowing just three hits. Breaking ball fouled off just a little piece of it off the end of the bat of Chacon, and the count holds at one and two. Ken asked, or rather Bob asked for money at third base. Has quite a string of errorless games going. The breaking ball belted into left field. Coming on fast is Pendleton, and he one-hands it for the out. Jim Pendleton coming and taking it right at the knees, bending over with the gloved hand to snare it, and Chacon is lined out. One away, and that'll bring up left-hand batter and catcher Choo Choo Coleman. Coleman's hitting 256. He has six home runs, 16 runs batted in. 
Bob Astromani at third has now played in 54 consecutive games without an error, but he must wait until the suspended game of September 7th is completed here on Thursday before it can be known if he has set the National League record of consecutive errorless games. Swing and a miss, strike one. Stan Hack played in 54 errorless games at third in 1942, and that has been the National League record. That pitch is high and away. It's one and one. If Vasquez should make an error in the final stages of the suspended game, his consecutive string would be only 50. If he does not make an error, he will have 55 straight, plus whatever he's able to accomplish before Thursday. Swinging a high pop foul off the line at third. Vasquez gives chase and gives up as the ball hits in the lower deck out of play. One and two to Choo Choo. First, there was a great deal of controversy and will be a great deal of controversy about Aspermani's record due to the fact that in the series played recently in Houston between the Mets and the Cove 45s, Jim Hickman hit a ground ball down to third. It was scored originally as a hit, as an error, and then was changed to a hit. The pitch swung on and missed strike three, struck him out. First strike out for Ken Johnson, not a changeup. He took a lot off of that and had uh, Choo Choo way out in front. Two men out, nobody out, and Felix Mantia is coming up. Met third baseman is hitting 279 with 11 home runs and 58 runs batted in. He's a right-hand batter. Ken Johnson with the pitch, and it's low for ball one. Marv Thronberry now on deck for Met. The pitch swung on a comebacker, knocked down by Ken Johnson. Picks it up, throws on the first in time to retire the side. Mantia has grounded out. Pitch it at first. In the bottom half of the first inning, the Mets are out with no runs on, no hits, no errors, and none left. And at the end of one full inning of play, the score is Houston Cold 45s nothing, and the New York Mets nothing. Well, this is the first game of a Twilight doubleheader. There'll be lots of baseball yet to come here at the Polo Grounds, so. Come on out. Plenty of good seats available here at the Polo Grounds for tonight's Twinite Doubleheader. Now tomorrow, starting at 6 p.m., another Twinite Doubleheader between these same two teams, the Mets and the Colt 45s. And Thursday afternoon, starting at 1.30 p.m., instead of the regular afternoon single game starting time of 2, it'll be 1.30 on Thursday when the Mets will play to conclusion the suspended game of a week ago Sunday, which ended after eight innings because of a prearranged curfew. The score was tied 7-7. So they play that one to conclusion and then play the regularly scheduled afternoon game of Thursday. So there'll be lots of baseball at the Polo Grounds this week and this will be the final week. It's a fact, smokers. Your cigarette's not tasting cool enough unless you're smoking cool. We're moving to the top half of the second inning, and the Colt 45s will send up center fielder Carl Warwick. Carl's a right-hand batter, one of the very few in the major leagues who throws left and bats right. Usually, it's the other way around. Left-hander Al Jackson works the pitch, and it's swung on and belted high down the line and left. Coming over is Frank Thomas. He is the edge of the warning track at the line, makes the catch in fair territory. High fly ball right down the line and left. Off the bat of Carl Warwick. One away. And that will bring up Bob Aspermani. Anytime a high fly ball starts down that line like that, there's danger at the polo ground. Aspermani, right-hand batter. He's hitting 266. He has 11 home runs and 56 runs batted in. He watches the pitch in there for a call. Strike one. Leaning way over to get a sign, has it now. Works the wind up, and the pitch is on the way. Breaking ball had missed outside, and it's one and one. The one one pitch 
swung on and lined into the glove of Chacon. He made a backhand stab and he's out. Elio Chacon ranging over with a backhand stab of the line shot. Off the bat of Aspermani, two away and nobody on. Roman Mejias, right hand batter coming up. Roman Mejias was the early season sensation of the Gold 45s, and he was somewhat miffed when he was not selected on the National League All-Star team. Dick Farrell was the lone representative of the Colt 45. Right now, Mejia is hitting 287 for the season. Watch it to pitch low for ball one. He has 23 home runs, and he has 68 runs batted in. That pitch is outside for ball. Three balls and no strikes out of Mejias. Two men out, nobody on base. The Colt 45 is batting in the top half of the second. That pitch is right in there for a call strike one. It's three and one. Mejias is waiting. 3-1 pitch on the way, swung on and fouled off. The count's full at 3-2. and two. Now here's back in the batter's box now, swinging the bat. Al Jackson starts to wind up for the payoff pitch. Swung on, it's a ground ball is short. A big hop to Elio Chacon. Guns it on over to first in time. And Al Jackson gets the Colt 45s out in order here. In the top of the second, no runs. I know it's no errors and none left. The end of an inning and a half. The score is the Colt 45s nothing, the New York Mets nothing. And now a word from Cool Cigarettes. Are you thinking of changing to a menthol cigarette? Well, don't make a disappointing change. Make the right change. Come up to Cool. Here's why. Your cigarette's not tasting cool enough Unless you're smoking cool You're not smoking cool enough Till you come up to cool Cool menthol magic, bright with taste Refreshing all day through Feel extra coolness in your throat As cool comes through for you You're not smoking cool Enjoy the extra coolness you feel in your throat when you smoke cool. Enjoy that bright, clear taste all day long. Come up to cool. Cool with the pure white filter or cool without filter. We're going now to the bottom half of the second inning, and the New York Mets will send up Marv Thronberry, the first baseman. Marv's hitting 251. He has 16 home runs and 48 runs batted in. Left-hand batter. Big Ken Johnson starts the motion, and here's the pitch. Swung on and missed, strike one. This afternoon, the Chicago Cubs beat the St. Louis Cardinals by a score of 4-3. to three. Paul Toth was the winner. Harvey Bryant the loser. Here is a line drive that is going into center field for a base hit off the bat of Marv Thornberry. Carl Warwick charges, fires it back in, and Marv is on with the first hit for the Mets. Off Ken Johnson, and that will bring up Frank Thomas. Frank batting number five in the batting order. Has a season's batting average of 263. He has 30 home runs and 87 runs batted in. Richie Ashburn is still out of the Met lineup, still bothered with the shoulder that he injured in the recent series in Houston against the Colt 45. Sidearm pitch misses outside, and it's ball one. Cold 45, nothing, the Mets nothing here in the bottom half of the second inning. First game of a twinight double header. Joe Christopher is on deck. Ten, 
Pull it away for a ball. 2 and 0 the count. Thomas waiting now as Johnson checks the runner. Pitch is low in there on a short up. Dug up by catcher Hal Smith. In that game at in Chicago this afternoon, there were home runs by Carl Sawatsky and Stan Musial for the Cardinals and by Ron Santo for the winning Chicago Cubs. Dodgers are at Milwaukee tonight, a latest start. He's running, and there's a throw through, and Thornberry is out at second base. Count of three balls and no strikes to Frank Thomas. One away, nobody on now, and Thomas at the plate. Dolly Hemus coaching at first base. Kiki Lavagetta around at third for the New York Mets. Johnson into the windup again. Pitch is swung on and fouled off. Joe Christopher's on deck for the Mets now. Dunbury was running on a 3 0 pitch that was right in there. The count now is three balls and two strikes to Frank Thomas. And he walked him. Ball four. So Thomas gets to first. With the first walk given up by Ken Johnson. One man out and Joe Christopher is coming up. Christopher has a season's batting average of 240. Five home runs, 27 runs batted in. But in his last 11 games he has gone 17 for 40 for a batting average of 425 over the past month he's hitting 338 pitches in there for a call strike to Christopher so it's been wrapping the baseball Sammy Drake has moved up to the on deck position now for the Mets Johnson's pitch breaking ball in there for a call strike. Two strike count to Christopher who is questioning the call of umpire Tony Benson behind the plate. Norm Larker at first holding Thomas on there. Here's a breaking ball. It's going low and it's one and two. Cold 45 is nothing, and the Mets nothing. Thomas leads off the bag at first, and here's the pitch side armor that is low. It's two and two. Ken Johnson has won six games. Neither of these teams as yet has a 10 game winner. Dick Farrell has won nine for Cold 45. Bob Bruce has won nine. Breaking ball swung on, full foul. Count old at two and two. Roger Craig has won nine games for the New York Mets, and Al Jackson, who's pitching tonight, has won eight. Two pitch swung on and sliced down the right field line. Foul ball. It's out of play. The count holds it two and two.
Now the 2-2 pitch swung on, foul back. Al Smith gives it a run, but gives up. This one's on the screen. Count holds at two and two. Thomas takes his lead. Here's a pitch swung on and foul off to the right side again out of play. Norm Larker giving a long look. Deciding not to come out of this one as it hits in the lower boxes. Count holds 2-2. Two -two. Joe Christopher has been fouling him off up there for the last few minutes. Out there and pitch misses everything. Comes all the way back to the screen. Thomas moves to second. Hal Smith comes after the ball. Thomas takes a wide turn at second and holds up there. Scored as a wild pitch. Well, that's the weakness of many batters. Low and behind them. Count to Christopher now is three and two. One man out. The Mets now have a runner in scoring position at second base. Waiting around is switch hitter Sammy Drake, who will be batting left, of course, tonight against the right-hand pitcher. Christopher waiting for a payoff pitch as Ken Johnson gets the sign from battery mate Hal Smith. Now uh, Christopher's a little tired of waiting, so he backs out of the batter's box. Comes back in. Payoff pick. Swung on and fouled off. The count holds at three and two. In the American League this afternoon, the Detroit Tigers beat the Minnesota Twins two to one. Jim Bunning, the winner. Jack Kralik, the loser. That was the only afternoon action in the American League. As if it swung out and missed strike three, he tried to check it, but brought it around far enough, according to umpire Tony Benson. The second strike out for Ken Johnson, and with Drake coming up in order to allow our stations to identify themselves, we pause now for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady, 8 time 10 on your dial, where the time is 29 minutes until 7, the temperature 59 degrees. This is Lindsay Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at the polo ground. As Second baseman Sammy Drake steps in there. He's hitting 188. He's been up only 16 times. He was at Syracuse, brought up to the Mets briefly, went to Columbus, and then came back. Pitch is high and away for ball. In 1960 season, this fellow, Sammy Drake, was with the Chicago Cubs and Appeared to have the third base position just about clinched. And two days before the season opened, he injured a finger. Ron Sando opened at third base instead of Drake, and Sando became rookie of the year. Pitch is high and away. 2-0. Oh. Frank Thomas leads at second base. Here's the 2-0 pitch. It's in there for a call strike, 2-1. and one. Colt 45s have Norm Larker at first, Joey Amalfitano at second, Bob Lillis at short, and Bob Espermati at third. Jim Pendleton in left, Carl Warwick in center, Roman Mejias in right, Al Smith catching, and Ken Johnson pitching. The 2-1 pitch swung on and foul back onto the screen behind the plate, out of play, 2-2. Two and two. Drake has a wide stance at the plate. He 
was with the Mets in spring training at St. Petersburg. He waits for the 2-2 pitch. It's on the way. Breaking ball swung on and foul off the line at third. Giving chase is Aspermani. He's there, and Bob Aspermani makes the catch. So Drake has fouled out. The third base, and in the bottom half of the second, the Mets got no runs on one hit. No errors and one left. And at the end of two innings complete, the score is the Houston Colt 45s nothing and the New York Mets nothing. Well, there's a big day coming uh, on Sunday here at the Polo Grounds. Fan Appreciation Day. And as an added feature of Fan Appreciation Day, next Sunday when the Mets play their final home game of the season here against the Chicago Cubs, there will be a softball game starting at 1.30 between actresses from the Broadway Show League and the WABC Good Guys. The umpires will be High Gardner and Gene Shepard from WOR-TV Channel 9. Others will be on hand that day to add to the festivities will be Horace McMahon, the star of the... TV series Naked City and Bill Foster, comic and entertainer. The teams will be managed by Dick Young of the New York Daily News and Barney Kremenko of the New York Journal American. Sports writers who've been traveling with the Mets since the club was assembled in St. Petersburg last spring. So that's Fan Appreciation Day, Sunday afternoon, September 23rd, the final home game of the Mets. Coming in here right now is Ralph China. Okay, Lindsay, it's the top of the third inning. Beautiful night for baseball and plenty to come your way. If you're driving by, we have some seats here and some exciting baseball to go your way. No score on this one. It's the top of the third, and now we move along, and the first pitch by Al Jackson is hit high in the air in foul territory. Marv Thronberry moving over under the ball waiting, and he makes the catch. So one pitch, Al Jackson gets Hal Smith, the starting leadoff man here in the third inning and it's out number one with the pitcher Ken Johnson coming up wind blowing out toward left field Dromberry started in foul territory for that ball and then had to move quickly to his right back toward the field to come up with the ball Smith before the out batting 229 with 11 home runs and 30 runs batted in and now the pitcher Ken Johnson Ken bats on the right-hand side. And the first pitch by Al Jackson, the left-hander, is inside for ball one. Johnson has no home runs this year and two runs batted in. He's batting 0-8 all. And now Johnson, without the protective helmet, being sent back to pick one up. Time called, and Al Jackson continues to loosen up on the mound. The Mets and the Colts here at the Polo Grounds all even on the series. Two wins apiece. For the season, the Mets have won three of 12. Still one game pending that will go in the column in the Houston home field. That's the suspended game, which will be played off before the Thursday day game at 1.30. That game will go in the ninth inning with a score tied at 7-7. Here's the next pitch to Ken Johnson as he gets in, and it's popped up high in the air. Again, it's Throwberry under the ball. This time he waits and makes a catch in fair territory. So Marv Thronberry picking up two put-offs, and the batter coming on is Bob Villas, right-hand batting shortstop. Villas flight out to center field his first time up. Batting at 248 for the year, one home run and 29 runs batted in. Jackson now with eight in a row into the windup and to the plate. And there's a the ball that's lying down the right field side. A base hit by Thronberry in the corner. Joe Christopher up with the ball, throws to second base, but the throw is late. And in the second base with a double is the leadoff man, Bob Lillard. Lillard's now one for two, and it will bring up Joe Amalfitano. That is the second hit off Al Jackson. First one... Picked up by Joe Malfatano in the first inning. Both hits right down the right field corner. And both hits doubles. So two men out now. On at second base, Bob Willis. And Al Jackson. Getting set to work here in the top of the third. No score in the game. Hey, 
Jackson on top and to the plate. And it's a curveball. It's low. Ball one. Clarence Coleman, the catcher. Marv Thornberry at first base. At second base, Sammy Drake. At shortstop, Elio Chicone. And Felix Manti at third. Jackson with a look at second and back to the plate with a change of pace that drops over for strike one. Slow curveball by Jackson. One ball, one strike. Al has developed a fine change of pace this year. Also has learned a little bit more about pitching and getting a real good chance to work. This is his 32nd start of the year, his 35th appearance. Now the 1-1 pitch. Curveball that bounces in the dirt. Dug out by Coleman. Two balls and one strike. Jackson has a record of two wins and one loss against the Colt 45. One of the wins, a one-hitter. Base hit coming in the first inning. Picked up by Joe Malfitano. Batting right here. And Joe now swings at the next pitch and flies out to right field. Coming in now waiting for the ball. Joe Christopher, he makes it get three tied to the side. So Al Jackson giving up a double. Allows no runs. There were no errors. One man left. And the score at the end of two and one half innings of play. The Colt 45 nothing. The New York Mets, nothing. Now here's one of your favorite vocalists for the bright new tune about New York's favorite beer. Ask me, Vic Damone, what beer to buy. I'll tell you. That Rheingold Extra Dry. Now that's the beer to buy. Its flavor's brisk and bright. And clearly extra dry, it's New York's favorite brew, the only one for you, because it's dry and true, that's Rheingold Extra Dry. The taste of Rheingold's bright, because it's brewed just right, brewed long and slow for flavor, clean and extra dry, that Rheingold Extra Dry, now that's a beer to buy, it's extra dry, that's why, have some Rheingold beer tonight. It's New York's favorite brew, the only one for you, because it's dry and true. Have a Rheingold beer tonight. Moving now to the home half of the third. No score in the game. And coming up for the first time against Ken Johnson is Jim Hickman. Right-hand batting center fielder. Jim batting 253 has 12 home runs and 42 runs batted in. And the big right-hander with his first pitch to Hickman. A changeup. It's full foul into the lower box seat for strike one. It'll be Hickman, Al Jackson, and Elia Chacon against Ken Johnson. Johnson has a record of six wins and 15 losses. He has won one and lost one against the Mets. Now the one strike pitch, and again it's foul for strike two. Hickman out in front of a knuckleball. 0 oh and 2. Johnson throws sidearm, also throws a lot of knuckleballs. He's tough when the knuckleball is controllable. All and two as Johnson goes into the windup and delivers. And it's a fastball high for ball one. One ball, two strikes. Johnson last year spent part of the year with Cincinnati and with Kansas City. He actually helped out the Cincinnati club in the pennant race. One two pitch outside and low. Two balls and two strikes. He was 0 and four at Kansas City and he won six and lost two for the Reds. Has a major league lifetime record of 18 wins and 32 losses. And now Johnson into the windup and the 2 2 pitch. Again, it's foul. Again, pulled down the left field side. Hickman way out in front. The count holds it two balls and two strikes. First game of two. In the second game, it will be left hander Hal Woodashek, 5 and 16 this year. Pitching for the Houston Colt 45. And going for the Mets, Larry Foss, who will be making his first start as a New York player. There's a check in the swing. It's popped up in the air in foul territory. Al Smith moving over toward the right field side. Picks it up for out number one. 
Hickman tried to hold up, couldn't keep the bat off the ball. So with one out, Al Jackson will come to bat for the first time. Jackson batting 0-7-0. He has driven in one run. And he bats on the left-hand side. And pitched way out of the strike zone, up around the eye. Now the wind-up and the one-strike pitch to Al Jackson. A bunt attempt, but it's foul. Ball going back on home plate. Strike two. Jackson likes to bunt. And the infield playing fairly deep on the right field side at first and second. Bob Aspermani at third base was playing in in front of the bag. Now he's moved back with two strikes. And here's the 0-2 pitch to Jackson. It's foul back, so the count will hold it 0-2 once again. Aspermani, incidentally, has a 54 consecutive game errors, error list streak going. But actually, he has to wait until the suspended game is played off before he'll know whether or not that's a major league record for third baseman. Here's the two-strike pitch again. A swing and a miss for strike three. So Ken Johnson picks up his third strikeout. And with two men out, the batter will be Elio Chacon. Elio lined out the left field his first time up. He's batting 241, batting from the right-hand side with two home runs and 25 runs batted in. Getting back to the airless streak of Bob Aspermani, you'll have to wait until the suspended game is played off. That'll be this Thursday at 1.30. And he'll have to go through that game before he can get the Major League record for airless games at third base. Here's the first pitch to Elie Chacon. It's on the outside corner, strike one. Actually, in that suspended game, an arrow was charged to him on a ball hit by Jim Hickman. Now the next pitch to Chacon outside, one ball, one strike. But after the game was over, it was the consensus that the ball was not an error and it was a base hit. So they reversed the scoring and Aspermani got off the hook on the air. Ball was hit very hard. I would say definitely that it was a base hit. Now the 1-1 pitch. Popped up in the air and foul territory, but it will go out of play. Chasing is Norm Locker, but he has no chance. So the count moves to one ball and two strikes as Chacon fouls into the stand. No score in the game. The Colt 45s have no runs on two hits. The Mets have been held to one hit by Ken Johnson. That base hit coming off the bat of Marv Thromberg in the second inning. Now the one-two pitch to Chacon. A swing and a miss for strike three. And Ken Johnson strikes out the second man in the inning, his fourth in the game, to retire the side. And the score at the end of three innings of play. The Colt 45s nothing, the New York Mets. Nothing. Well, the other day on a day off, we got a chance to take a look at the new ballpark, and it is really going to be beautiful. And the progress has come along so nicely now that the Mets are accepting applications for season boxes and combination plan tickets. Prospective purchasers may send names and addresses to ticket manager Polo Grounds, New York 39, New York, and application blanks will be sent them. Present subscribers need not apply as applications will be mailed to them. Place to mail in for your box seat, season boxes, and your combination plan tickets is ticket manager, Polo Grounds, New York, 39, New York. The distances at the new ballpark will be about 340 down each line and about 410 feet in center field. Quite a bit different from right here where it's 475 to center field and 250 throw down the right field line, 270 down the left field line. And it's going to be quite a ballpark. You know, this is the time of year when a frosty glass of beer seems to taste best. And when that glass holds cold, refreshing Rheingold Extra Dry, oh boy, it tastes even better. That's because Rheingold is beer as beer as should taste. And dry tells you why. Enjoy it. Right along with the game. And we're moving along in the game at the top of the fourth. No score. And the first pitch by Al Jackson to Jim Pendleton is a strike call. The fastball through. 
Pendleton bounced to third his first time up. He's batting 244. Right hand batting left fielder. Jackson back to work, and the one strike pitch is lying foul down the left field line. The ball curving out of the reach of Felix Mantia. So the count 0 and 2 against the right hand batter. It'll be Jim Pendleton, Norm Larker, and Carl Warwick here in the fourth inning. The third, fourth, and fifth batters in the lineup. Jim has been tough against the Mets this year. He has really hit well. Now here's Jackson with a two-strike pitch. It's hit deep to left center field. Moving back, Thomas, also Hickman. Hickman is closer. He turns and he makes the catch. So Pendleton flies out to deep left center field for out number one here in the top of the fourth with no score. And it'll bring up Norm Locker, left-hand batting first baseman. Norm was out on the ground at second base his first time up. He's batting 263. Eight home runs and 53 runs batted in. In 1960, Norm hit 323 and was second in the National League batting race. Second to Dick Grode, who hit 325. Norm at that time playing for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And he looks at a fastball in the outside corner for strike one. Now the left-hander Al Jackson into the windup and the one-strike pitch to Locker. Slow curveball hits sharply down to first base. Taken on the first stop by Mark Thronberry. He turns, throws Al Jackson for out number two. Oh, well, Mark Thronberry turned the base hit and threw an out on a fine play, and that will bring up Carl Warwick. Warwick got... In the air to left field his first time up. He's batting 268. 16 home runs and 61 runs batted in. Juju Coleman out to the mound to talk to Al Jackson, who so far has given up two hits, both doubles, one to Bob Lillis and one to Joe Malfatano. No score. The Mets have one base hit. And with two out, Jackson goes to work. And his first pitch to the right-hand batter is outside and low for ball one. Warwick acquired from the St. Louis Cardinals in exchange for Bobby Chan. There's a sinking fastball that moves down too low. Two balls and no strike. Jackson back to Warwick with a fastball that is outside ball three. So Al Jackson, who has not given up a walk, is now 3-0 to Carl Warwick with two men out and Bob Astromani in the on-deck circle. Jackson into the windup and the 3-0 pitch is low for ball four. That moves Warwick down 90 feet to first base and brings up Bob Astromani. Bob lined out to the shortstop Ely Chacon his first time up, and it was a great play by Chacon to come up with the ball. He made a high-jumping backhanded catch for the out. Bob batting 266 for the year, 11 home runs, and 56 runs batted in. And the right-hand batter looks at the fastball that is way inside for ball one. So Jackson now with five straight balls 1 and 0 to Bob Aspermani and the next pitch is low for ball 2 two balls and no strikes the on deck batter Roman Mejia Jackson into the short stretch position. A look at first base and back with a 2-0 pitch. And there is strike one. Fastball on the outside corner just above the knee. That moves the count to two balls and one strike with two men out. Scott Deal coaching at first base. Harry Kraft at third. And Jackson now over to first base to keep Warwick on it. He gets back safely. Now Jackson set on the mound. 
And back to the plate. A curveball swung on and missed for strike two. Choo Choo Coleman lost the ball in the air as he started to pick it up to throw it. Reached up and pulled it out of the air. Runner holding at first base. And the count now, two balls and two strikes. Jim Hickman in center field, a shade toward left center. And now Jackson back to work with a fastball that's low, and the count goes full at three balls and two strikes. That'll give Warwick a chance to run at first base with two men out, and Mara Thronbury now moves behind him to get more defensive room. The on-deck batter is Roman Mejia. And the runner goes on the 3-2 pitch. It's hit on the ground slowly to third. Mantia in, throws the first base in time to retire the side. Felix Mantia played the ball slowly, but still got his man with plenty of time. No runs, no hits, no errors. One walk, one man left on. And the score at the end of three and one-half innings of play. The Colt 45 is nothing. The New York Mets, nothing. Well, now, let me see. Crew Walt. Eileen O'Neill, Beverly Owen, Chris Noel, Daryl Merrill, Loretta Vassell. Mm, wonder who will be next Miss Rangal. Well, I can tell you this. I'm glad the choice isn't up to me. Six candidates for Miss Rangal 1963 are as pretty a six-pack as I've ever seen. But who's going to win? It's all up to you. Your votes will decide who will be your Miss Rheingold 1963. And there is just one way to make sure your favorite will be your next Miss Rheingold. Vote. The familiar Miss Rheingold ballot boxes are up in the 45,000 stores and taverns all over town that sell beer as beer should taste. Rheingold Extra Dry. So next time you're ordering New York's favorite beer, join in on the nation's second largest election and drop in a vote or two for your favorite candidate. Listen. Along with the game, treat yourself to a brisk, bright flavor of a sparkling glass of Rheingold Extra Dry. You'll join the millions who say, my beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. Bottom half of the fourth inning, no score. And the first man up is Coleman. He attempts a bunt and pops it high in the air. Ken Johnson just stands there, waits and makes the catch. Paul Coleman, who struck out his first time up, now is 0 for 2. On a bunt attempt, and with one out and no score, the batter will be Felix Mantia. Felix bounced back to the pitcher his first time up. He came on at the game with a 279 average. Right hand batting third baseman. And Ken Johnson now into the windup and to the plate with a knuckleball that's on the outside corner for strike one. Johnson now through three and one-third innings has given up no runs, allowed only one hit. That to Mar Thromber in the on-deck circle. And he has struck out four while walking one. There's a one-strike pitch hit deep in the hole, coming over Bob Willis. A good play as he throws over to first base in time. Willis covered up the ground quickly at shortstop, went in the hole, got in front of the ball, and threw quickly to get his man for out number two. So the man who Maury Wills beat out, Bob Lillis, turns in a good play as Marv Thromberry comes up. Marv singles to center field his first time up. He's one for one, batting 251. 16 home runs and 48 RBIs. And Ken Johnson in the windup, and the first pitch to the left-hand batter is a fastball under the chin for ball one. Johnson is not too fast, but his fastball looks fast after the assortment of curveballs, knuckleballs, and change of paces that he dishes up. Now the 1-0 pitch, a changeup that has popped up. Coming in at second base, Ken Astromani, correction, uh, Joe Malfitano, and he makes the catch to retire the side. So Ken Johnson turns the Mets away, 1-2-3 in the bottom half of the fourth inning, and the score stays the same at nothing-nothing. Now as we move along to the fifth inning of play, once again, here is Lindsey Nelson. All right, Ralph. Between games tonight, of course, we're going to be honoring Casey Stengel here, and uh, there's another big special event that'll take place here at the Polo Grounds tomorrow. 
between games of the Twi Night doubleheader against Houston. And tomorrow night also will be the only ladies' night of the year. Two Owens Cabin Cruisers will be awarded to Met players by Howard Close tomorrow night. One Cabin Cruiser worth $5,000 will be given to the most valuable Met player as voted by the fans. And a second Cruiser worth $7,000 will be given to the Met with the highest score for hitting the Howard signs here at the Polo Ground. The winner of this vote will not be determined until the conclusion of the first game tomorrow night. Right now, Mar Thronberry is leading in that competition. Frank Thomas still has a chance to catch him. In addition, Kathy Kirsch, Miss Rheingold 1962, and Eileen Rogers, the beautiful TV performer and Broadway singing star of the musical Anything Goes, will help in the presentation. Howard Close will also present five complete wardrobes and five suits of clothes to fans who participate in the voting. Remember, Howard Close night, tomorrow night, Wednesday, September 19th. We're moving out of the top half of the fifth inning. Al Jackson, the start, is still in there for the New York Mets and up to lead off for the Houston Colt 45, Roman Mejias. Right hand batter, the right fielder, has been up one time, and he grounded out short to first. Jackson works with the windup and the pitch. It is high and away as Mejia shortened up and bluffed the bunt. Took the pitch outside for ball one. And the pitch is swung on, belted into left field. This is in there for a base hit. Thomas coming over to try to cut it off. It gets by him, and it goes on past and near the bullpen area. Hickman is up with it, relays it in. Mejia's on his way to third. Dives in head first. There's no play on him there as Chacon runs the ball back to the infield. It's a triple for Roman Mejia. Frank Thomas came over to try to stab it and cut it off. It got on past him, and Hickman had to run it down in the bullpen area. He relayed it into Elio Chacon. And Roman Mejia went sliding in head first at third, and he has a triple. So the Colts 45 have it open up here in the top half of the fifth. The next to race hit, and that brings up Hal Smith. He's been up one time. Popped out to first base. Mets pull the infield in to try to cut off the run at the plate here. Now there is no score in this game, and we're in the fifth inning. Pitch is swung in. It's a high foul ball on the right field line out of play. Strike one count to the Houston catcher, Hal Smith. In the first inning, after Bob Lillis had slid out to center field, Joey Amalfitano doubled, and then he moved on the third on an infield out, but died there when Norm Larker grounded out. Jackson works with the full windup here. The pitch swung on and foul back out of play. It's strike two. Jackson got the Colts out in order in the second and the third with two men out. Bob Lillis doubled, but died there when Joey Malfitano flied the right. And the fourth inning with two men out. Carl Warwick walked, but died there when Aspermani grounded out. Now the Colts have opened up in the top of the fifth with a triple. Their third hit of the night off Al Jackson. Al Smith backs out of the batter's box. Time has been called by umpire Tony Benson. Now pitch is fine. It's a high foul ball coming back. Choo Choo Coleman looking for a play. He's underneath and Choo Choo one hands it. Almost misjudged it and uh, just managed to one hand it for the odd. And right now, with one man out in the runner at third in order to allow our stations to identify themselves, we pause now for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady, 810 on your dial, where the time is one minute past seven, the temperature 59 degrees. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Kiner and Bob Murphy here at the Polo Grounds and pitcher Ken Johnson, the right-hand batter, is up for the Colt 45. The Mets still have the infield in. Hoping to cut off the run at the plate. Jackson still works with the full windup and the pitch. Swung on and foul back onto the screen for strike one. Ken Johnson has been up one time and he popped up to first. This season he has been up 50 times and he has four base hits for a batting average of .080.
And Mejias is coming home. And the pitch is bunted. The squeeze is on. And he is in there with the run as the play is made. On over to first to Sally, or rather to Sammy Drake covering. It was a suicide squeeze, and they had Roman Mejias running on the pitch. It was tight and high, but Johnson managed to bunt the ball for the sacrifice that gets the run across. And the Colts are out in front of you by a score of one to nothing on the squeeze with one man out. Now there are two men out, nobody on, and Bob Lillis is coming up. Ken Johnson, the big pitcher, almost neglected to run it out at all after he had managed to bunt the ball. He got out of the way of Mejias, of course, and then made a belated start to first base. This ball is running down the third baseline. Jackson Fields, it slips down. He has no play. And on at first is Lillis with the base hit. Jackson fielded the ball cleanly, but slipped down right on the seat of his pants and was able to make no play. To score that as a bunt base hit. Two men out, Joey Amalfitano coming up. He doubled the first inning and flied to right in the third. The Houston Colt 45 is leading by a score of one to nothing here in the top half of the fifth inning. Between games of tonight's Twinite doubleheader, Casey Stengel will be honored for 50 years service in the Major League. That pitch is high. It's ball one. Casey Stengel, of course, broke in with the Brooklyn Dodgers as a player. He played with the New York Giants. He began his managerial career with Brooklyn. He later managed the Yankees and is managing the New York Mets. So Casey has worn the uniform of four New York baseball clubs in his 50-year Major League career. Pitches outside for ball. It's 2-0. Speaking at a luncheon today, Casey said, I have to hide sometimes in my backyard in Glendale, California, but I must admit I made most of my money in the East. Thank you very much. 2-0 is the count. That pitch is high. Three balls and no strikes now to Malfitano. Jackson takes a moment now to rub up the ball. Right in there for a call strike. It's three and one. Old 45 scoring their run on a suicide squeeze. Here's a throw to first, not in time. That play is very aptly named because if the batter does not happen to bunt the baseball, it is certainly suicide for the base runner. Here's a swing and a line drive foul on the right field line. One hop on up into the stands. It's a full count. Joey Amalfitano. Lillis leads off the bag at first base. Thornberry is not holding him on. This pitch is swung on. Foul right down into the dirt. No play on it. That will bring Bob Lillis back. He, of course, was moving on... 3-2 pitch with two men out. Jackson looking in to get a sign. Lillis leaves. He's off, and here's the pitch swung on. Line to right field. Christopher coming over, and he can't get there. He's going to have to play it off the wall. Christopher up with it. Lillis to third. And he is being held up at third as Thornberry, the cutoff man, takes the ball in the middle of the diamond. And Malfitano pulls up at second with a double. His second two-base hit of the night. Here's the Colt 45 runners at second and third with two men out and Jim Pendleton coming up. Well, Joey Malfitano was not in the original starting lineup posted tonight by manager Harry Kraft. Johnny Temple was listed as the number two batter and second baseman, but... A knee was bothering that he sustained in a collision with Joe Torrey in Milwaukee, and he was told to work out, take batting practice, and see how it felt. He did not feel good. So Kraft decided not to play Temple, instead to play Joey Amalfitano. He has responded with two doubles and three times at bat. 
Here's Fenlon. He's grounded out and flied out in two previous trips. Broken bat, one hopper to Chacon at short. He plays it over to Thornberry in time, and the side is retired. So in the top half of the fifth inning, the Colts 45 got one run. On three hits, there were no errors, and two men left. And at the end of four and one-half innings of play at the polo ground, the score is the Houston Colts 45 won, and the New York Mets nothing. Now a message from Rheingold Extra Dry, told completely with music. fifth inning and the New York Mets send up Frank Thomas, the number five man in the batting order. Frank has been up one time and he walked. Ken Johnson, six feet, four inches tall, 210 pounder on the mound, a big right-hander into the windup. And here's the pitch to Thomas. Swung on and fouled off for strike one. Joe Christopher on deck for the Mets. Here, starting a little rhythmic applause in support of the Mets. Here in the bottom half of the fifth inning, breaking ball misses way outside. Comes on back, as a matter of fact, glancing off the backhand attempt of Al Smith to corral it. One and one now. A one one pitch. Low, and it's two and one. In the second game of this Twine Out doubleheader, Hal Woodishick is scheduled to go for the Colt 45s, and Larry Foss is scheduled to pitch for the New York Mets. Foss recently obtained from the Pittsburgh Pirate organization. So curveball outside. Three balls and one strike now to Frank Thomas. Foss pitched at Asheville in the Solid League this year, where he won 10 games in the last five. Here's a 3 1 pitch. Swung on and foul back onto the screen out of play, and it's a full count to Thomas. Ken Johnson reared back and fired that one. Johnson taking at the bill of his cap, looking in for his sign from battery mate Hal Smith. Tony Vinson indicates we're ready for play. Here is a payoff pitch. It's high. He walked in for the second time. Then Johnson has walked only two. Both of them have been Frank Thomas. So the Mets have the potential tying run on his first now with nobody out and Joe Christopher coming up. Christopher's been up one time and he struck out swinging. He's looking down to... Cookie Lavagetta, the sign man at third. See what he's doing here, strategy-wise. Thomas leads it first, being held on by Larka. The pitch, and it is bunted foul. Strike one to Joe Christopher. Had the sacrifice on. Sammy Drake is on deck for the Mets. With the Houston Colt 45s leading here by a score of one to nothing in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Johnson 
Jackson with the pitch. It is funny this time. I'm trying to say Hal Smith overruns it. There's no play on the goal line at this stage. Runners at first and second. Hal Smith trying to make the play on the bump overran it. Score it as a base hit. Score it as a base hit. For Joe Christopher. As it always bunted out in front of the plate and catcher Hal Smith and trying to barehand it to make the play on. He would have had no play at second base anyway. Trying to overrun it to make the play on at first. He overran it. So both runners are safe. And the official score interprets it as a base hit. Christopher and Sammy Drake is up there. Left-hand batter. Let's see what he's doing. Here's the pitch and he shortened up a little and took it outside. Ball one. Took that hand down the bat. Go to lay it down and then took it outside. Ball one. At third base, Bob asked for money. He's even with the edge of the grass. Now moves up the step into the cutout. Norm Lockery first in a similar position in anticipation of a bunt attempt. He's swinging and it's a ground ball. It's going to go straight. Flags the ball, the hole, Christopher at second. And Sammy Drake is on at first with a single right and run batted in. Here was the play with Drake pulled in, or rather with Larka pulled in. Drake hit the ground ball between him, Alpatana and Norm Larka for a base hit on out into right field. Thomas turned at third. Roman Mejia charged the ball, tried to come up with it, but simply flipped it up into the air. Couldn't find the handle for a moment. Then changed his mind, decided to throw to third and almost overthrew. Astromani at third pulled him way off the bag. So the Mets have runners at first and second. One run in. The score is tied 1-1, and Jim Hickman is at the plate. Hickman, a right-hand batter with a wide stance. Still nobody out from Mets. Hickman squared once the ball on the first baseline. Fielded by Johnson. You'd have to go to first. He does. The sacrifice successfully executed. As the play went, if you're scoring at one to four, Joy Amalfitana covering at first base on the sacrifice, which has moved Joe Christopher to third base and has moved Sammy Drake to second base. And will bring up now pitcher Al Jackson. Action in the cold bullpen. It's Russ Camera. Right under. Veteran performer, Russ Camera throwing in the bullpen. So the Mets have tied it up here, 1-1 one, one in the bottom half of the fifth inning, and the coach pulled the infield in now to try to cut off a uh, run at the plate. One man out. Big Ken Johnson looking in as he signed. Works straight away now. He's run his second and third. And Jackson hits the ground ball to Larker. He overruns it. And coming on to score is Christopher. The play to first base is in time. But the run has scored. As Larker got his glove on the ball. Knocked it down. Overrun it by a step. Had to pick it up and play it. On over to first. To Malfitano in time. Holding it second. Sammy Drake. A run in. And the Mets are leading here by a score of 2-1. to one With two men out. Neilio Chacon coming up. Give Al Jackson a run batted in on the infield out. Chacon's a right hand batter. He is lined out to left field and struck out tonight. Right arm pitchers in there for a call strike one. Choo Choo Coleman now waiting on deck for the Mets. Johnson comes set, and here's the pitch. It's high for ball. One and one. This is the first game of a twi-night doubleheader here at the Polo Grounds. We'll have another twi-night doubleheader tomorrow night. Single game Thursday afternoon to be preceded with the completion of a suspended game. Breaking ball outside. It's two and one. Al Smith steps a few steps out in front of the plate. Toss the ball back to Ken Johnson. Oh, 
Ken Johnson into the stretch position. Drake leads it second. Throw to second. He's back safely. And Alfatana taking the throw back there. Second baseman, Joey and Alfatana. Count to Chacon is two balls and one strike. The pitch swung on. It's a fly ball to center field. Carl Warwick moves over underneath and waiting, and Carl Warwick hauls it down for the out. Chacon is flat out to center in the bottom of the fifth. The Mets got two runs on two hits. There were no errors and one left. And at the end of five full innings of play, the score is New York Mets 2 and the Houston Colts 45 1. Good field, no hit. Four little words that summed up a baseball prospect. Extra dry. Two little words that sum up the story of New York's largest selling beer. And that has to be Rheingold Extra Dry Beer. Yes, extra dry tells you why Rheingold is so much more refreshing than other beers. Extra dry tells you why Rheingold is so wonderful. Extra dry tells you why Rheingold is a better beer. Brewed from the choicest ingredients, Rheingold is beer as beer should taste. Brisk and bright and clean clear through. And this happy fact you'll discover with your very first glass. Isn't it about time you enjoyed the difference dry can make? All you have to do is ask for Rheingold. Rheingold Extra Dry. Have a glass right now. Enjoy fine, cold Rheingold along with our baseball game. We're going out of the top half of the sixth inning. And the cold 45s will send up Norm Larker, batting number four in the batting order. Been up twice, grounded out both times. Left hand batter. Facing left hander Al Jackson. Little Al with a wind up in the pitch. That's a bunted at strike one. Jackson has a season's record of eight victories and 18 losses. Is inside, one and one. Here's a swing and a ground ball to second base. A big hop to Sammy Drake. He plays on to Thornberry in time. And Norm Larker has grounded out second to first. He's one away, nobody on. And Carl Warwick is coming up. Fly out to left and walk. is bunted down the third baseline a foul ball taken by Mantia that will bring Warway back trying to bunt for the base hit goes to strike one up to right now the biggest winner on the pitching staff for the Mets is also the biggest loser Roger Craig pitches in there for a call strike two to Warwick Craig has won nine games and lost 23. The same thing is true of the Colt 45. Their biggest winner is their biggest loser, Dick Farrell. He's won nine and lost 19. Bob Bruce has won nine and lost eight. Pitch is high. One and two now to Warwick. Jackson's pitch. On away. It's 2 2. The Mets 2 and the Colt 45s 1 here in the top half of the sixth inning. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Swung out and missed strike three. He struck him out. And for a little Al Jackson, that's his first strike out of the evening. 
coming here in the top half of the sixth. Two men out, nobody on, and Bob Aspromonti's coming up. Lined out to Chacon at shortstop. Grounded out third to first. It's just swung on and has a high fly ball into right field. Joe Christopher coming in, and Christopher has it for the out. Top half of the sixth inning, the Colt 45s are out in order with no runs on no hits, no errors, and none left. And at the end of five and a half at the Polo Grounds, the score is the New York Mets two and the Houston Colt 45s one. Say, what's your idea of a wonderful day? An excursion in the suburbs? Day on the Sound? trip to a lake or maybe just a long journey into your own backyard with your portable radio. Well, no matter which, any day becomes a little bit more wonderful when you have refreshing Rheingold beer on hand. Yes, sir, Rheingold is something special when it comes to beer, and dry tells you why. Rheingold's way of brewing is long, slow, and costly, but you can measure the difference in taste. Rheingold is beer as beer should taste. Brisk and bright and clean, clear through. And isn't that the way you want your beer to be? Sure it is. So make Rheingold your beer. Join the millions who say, my beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. Find out for yourself why Rheingold is New York's largest selling beer. Have a glass right now, along with the game. We're going out to the bottom half of the sixth inning, and Choo Choo Coleman is up to lead off for the Mets. And Johnson works pitch outside for ball one. Choo Choo struck out swinging in the first inning and uh, popped the ball up trying to bunt in the bottom half of the fourth, trying to drag one. That is a maneuver he executes very well, incidentally. Uses his speed to excellent advantage. Pitch is low, and it's 2 0 to Choo Choo Coleman. That pitch is in there for a call strike. It's two and one. Hey, hot dog. Swing and a miss. Choo choo. Taking the riffle. It's two and two. He swung on and pulled foul. Count holds it two and two to Choo Choo. Leading off of the Mets here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. New York two and Houston one. Johnson looking in for his sign. Starts the big pitching motion, and here's a 2-2 pitch. Uh, held up and taken outside for ball. Choo-choo started to go. He had a big notion and held up at the last moment to run the count out full at 3-2. and two. Johnson now with the payoff pitch. Swung on and lined in the right field for a base hit. Roman Mejia, Bob was at a moment, picked it up, places back into first base, and Chuchu goes to second. He's hung up between first and second. Amal Fatana running him back. Malarka runs him back towards second, pick him, and Chuchu is tagged out. Give him a base hit, a single, and, uh, and he is run down between first and second. Tag was made by Lilly. So that play would go nine, three, four, six. So give Choo Choo a single, and he is out nine, three, four, six. Right field, first base, second base, shortstop. And coming up is Felix Mantia, right hand batter. 
Went up twice and grounded out both times. Pitch is on the way. And he is hit by a pitch ball. Hit in the hip. Brings the bat up into the air and starts slowly down to first base, getting rid of the hard hat on the way. So the Mets get a base runner here in the bottom half of the six with one man out and Marv Thornberry coming up. Marv single in the second, popped out to second base in the fourth. In the National League this afternoon, the Chicago Cubs beat the St. Louis Cardinals by a score of four to three. Paul Toast was the winner for the Cubs. Harvey Branch was the loser for the Cardinals. Carl Sawatsky and Stan Musial homeward for the cards. Here is a swing and a miss by Thornberry. Ron Sando had a homer for Chicago this afternoon. Los Angeles Dodgers are at Milwaukee in a later start. It's just a little tight to Thornberry. It's one and one. Cincinnati is at Pittsburgh in a later start. Those are the only games scheduled in the National League. The American League, the Yankees are at Washington. Detroit this afternoon beat Minnesota 2-1. to one. Bunning got the victory. Jack Curley took the loss. Boston is at Chicago on a later start. Cleveland at Kansas City a later start. Baltimore at Los Angeles to play the Angels in a later start. Breaking ball swung on and foul off. Into the stands now to play, and it's one and two now to Mark Thornberry. New York Mets 2 and the Houston Colt 45s 1. First game of a twilight doubleheader at the Polo Grounds. Lots of baseball yet to come here tonight. And between games, Casey Stengel is going to be honored. 1-2 pitch, swung on and missed. Strike 3, struck him out. Two men out, runner at first. Frank Thomas coming up. He's been up twice and he walked both times. That's the fifth strikeout for Ken Johnson. Swung on, and it's one big hop to Lilies. He plays over to Amalfitana for the force that retires the side. Way there going Lilies to Amalfitana. 6-4, and in the bottom half of the sixth, New York Mets are out with no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left. And at the end of six full innings of play at the Polo Grounds, the score is the Mets 2 and the Houston Cole 45s 1. And coming in here right now, Bob Murphy. Thank you very much, Lindsay. You know, the Army Syracuse game this year will be played right here on the Polo Grounds, a big college encounter on the 29th of September. And in addition to the Army Syracuse football game on the 29th of September, spectators will have the opportunity of viewing the United States Corps of Cadets who will put on one of their stirring and memorable parades right here in the ballpark before the game. And tickets for this two-for-one show are now on sale at all three of the Met ticket outlets located at the Polo Grounds Grand Central Station near the 42nd in Vanderbilt Ramp and the Long Island Waiting Room of the Penn Station. So make your plans now to get your group together and see the Army Syracuse game on September 29th in the Polo Grounds. Well, I'll bet a lot of the folks are taking this opportunity to check their supply of cool, refreshing Rheingold Extra Dry. Yes, sir, Rheingold is beer as beer should taste. And dry tells you why. Keep plenty of Cole Rheingold on hand now for every Mets game. In the seventh inning, Roman Mejias leads off against Alvin Jackson. Mets leading by a score of 2-1, to one, first game of a doubleheader. A smash hit hard to right center, a base hit it may go up the alley. Running over is Christopher, he grabs it in right center, and he holds him to a single. So Roman Mejias, the right fielder, now has two for three. He tripled his last time up. The batter now is the catcher, Hal Smith. 
New York, two runs, four hits, and no errors. Houston, one run, six hits, and no errors. Now Smitty, right-hand batter waiting, and a throw to first by Jackson, not in time. Al Smith has been up twice, fouled out to Thronberry and fouled out to Choo Choo Coleman. Up goes the leg, down comes the army, bunts, but it's foul, no play. Right now, while they're retrieving the foul ball, we'll take time to pause for station identification. 810 on your dial, WGY Schenectady. The time is 29 minutes until 8. The temperature, 58 degrees. One strike count on Hal Smith. Roman Mejia's on first. Nobody out, top of the seventh inning. Mets in front by a score of 2-1. to one. Jackson delivers to the plate. A swing and a base hit to left field. Thomas moving over toward the line. He's up with it. And now Mejia's turns second and holds up there. Now the pitcher, Ken Johnson, is scheduled up, and he will hit. He laid down a real good bunt on a suicide squeeze play to get the only run home for Houston in the fifth inning. And now with a bunt situation, Harry Kraft is sending Johnson up to hit. He had Russ Kimmer warming up in the bullpen in the event he wanted to send up a hitter. And that's looking for the bunt. Throneberry coming up the line toward home plate. Jackson looking in for his sign from Choo Choo. Now Jackson off the stretch. Delivers to the plate. He tries to bunt. Foul ball, no play. Bob Lillis, the on-deck batter, and then Joey Amalapitano. Now Jackson up in pitching position. Pickoff play, throw to second, not in time. Mejia's dashing back. That's trying to put on a pickoff play with Mejia's trying to get as much lead as possible off second in the bunt situation. Ken Johnson, big right-hand batter waiting. He turns around, pitch out, no throw made. Sammy Drake broke in to take the throw at first base on the pitch out. But the first base runner, Hal Smith, had not wandered far enough off to warrant a throw from Choo Choo. Count is even, one ball, one strike. Now Jackson in the set position. Delivers to the plate. He's around the bunt but doesn't offer at it. It's low and inside, ball two. Two and one, the count on Ken Johnson. Now the pitch on the way. He bunts, fair ball, a real good bunt. Play to third, the ball is thrown away. In the left field by Al Jackson. Mejias is coming down the line with a tying run. Boy, that was a beauty of a bunt by Ken Johnson. He is quite a bunter. Jackson fielded the ball near the third base line. He was running at full speed toward the line. He would have had a tremendous time trying to turn around and throw the runner out at first. He took the gamble on throwing to third and throwing off balance, threw the ball into left field. It will be scored as a sacrifice, and an error will be charged to Al Jackson. And now the game is tied 2-2. Two to two. Runners on first and third, nobody out. Bob Lillis, the leadoff batter, is up against Jackson. Pitch is in the dirt. Choo Choo scoops it out. One ball and no strikes. Game tied up now, two to two. Al Smith is on third, and Ken Johnson is on first. Twice in the game, Harry Kraft has had his pitcher Johnson bunting, and both times he has done quite a job. Outside, Bob Lillis, ball two, two and oh. 
Phillips has two for three, doubled in the third inning, and Bunnett for a base hit in the fifth inning. Now Jackson checks the runners, and the pitch to Lillis. He pops the ball up on the right side of the infield. Backing up for it, Sammy Drake. On the rim of the grass, he takes it for the out. Let's add the infield in, and so Sammy had to hustle back to the rim of the outfield grass for it. One man away, here's Joey Amalfitano. Amalfitano has two doubles and three times up. Houston, two runs, seven hits and no errors. New York, two runs, four hits and one error. Al Patano, right hand batter waiting. Pitch thrown by Jackson, a swing and a miss, rank one. Let's have the infield hoping for a shot at the double play. Throw to first by Choo Choo Coleman, is in the dirt, but Thronberry blocks it. It was a delayed throw by Choo Choo. He was going on the surprise element with that one. He almost surprised everyone. Now the pitch to the plate. A ground ball hit hard, and it's a base hit through the hole going into left field. Al Smith comes in to score, and Houston goes out in front three to two. Mal Patano now has three for four in the game. Three to two, the Colt 45s in front. Runners on first and second, one down. The batter is Jim Pendleton. Big left fielder, right hand batter. Grounder hit through the hole. A base hit going into left field. Rounding third is Johnson. He'll be held up there as Thomas whips the ball into Choo Choo. And now the Colt 45s have the bases loaded with one out. They now have combed Al Jackson for four hits here in the seventh inning. Now they send the sign down to the bullpen, and we'll get some warm-up action going for the New York Mets. Coming on to hit will be the first baseman, Norm Larker. Larker hitless in three times up. Twice has been thrown out by Sammy Drake, and once on a hot shot on the ground by Marv Thronberry. Marv made a good play going off to his right to take the hard grounder. Left-hander against left-hander. Al Jackson facing Norm Larkin. Ball one, outside and low. Base is loaded, one man out. And the cleanup hitter, Norm Larker, batting. Now Jackson has his sign, winds and pitches. Inside and low, and he falls behind him, two and nothing. Greg Anderson loosening up in the bullpen. First game of a doubleheader, and we're in the seventh inning of the opener. Let's have the infield playing Larker as a full batter. Elio Chicone shaded towards second. He checks the swing, but it's over for a call strike, two and one. Now Coleman setting up the target. The pitch on the way is rammed hard on the ground. Base hit going into right field. Johnson is in the score. Rounding third and hitting in is Amal Patano. And two runs cross the plate. Five to two now in favor of the Colt 45. 
Hard ground ball hit by Norm Larker just beyond the reach of Sammy Drake. Runners now on first and third. So the Colt 45 have now scored four runs on five hits. Aided by one error, and they now lead five to two. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Now the hitter is Carl Warwick. Warwick has fly to left, drawn a walk, been struck out. He's 0 for 2. Foul ball, no play. He is the number two man on the Colt squad in the power department. Home runs and runs batted in. And he's done a good job for the Houston club since they acquired him in a swamp for Bobby Shands early in the year with St. Louis. Infield back and straight away looking for two. The outfield is dragged to left. Over his head, he ducks under it. One ball, one strike. Jackson gave up three hits in the fifth inning, but seemed to regain his touch and got the side out in order in the sixth inning. He now has given up four runs on five hits in the seventh. A towering pop-up. Coming up the line is Mantilla toward home. He's in foul ground. And Felix takes it for the out. Now there are two away, and the ninth man up in the inning is Bob Aspermani, the third baseman. Aspermani has lined out to short, grounded out third to first, and flying to right. He's 0 for 3. Mets led 2-1 to one, coming into the seventh inning. Houston with four runs in, now leading 5-2. to two. Here's the pitch on the way. It's over at the knees for a call strike on Bob Aspermani. Aspermani hitting a 244 on the year. Tall, slender, right-hand hitter. A fly ball hit deep to center. Back goes Jim Hickman. He's drawing a beat on it. And he makes the catch. The side is out. So the Houston Colt 45 batted around at the top of the seventh inning, scoring four runs on five hits. One error. That was charged to Al Jackson on the wide throw at third. And two men left on. The score at the end of six and a half innings, Houston five, New York two. Say, did you ever feel that your cigarette had suddenly changed signals on you? Now, that brand you're smoking, it tasted okay when you first smoked it, as it suddenly begun to taste hot and dry. Now, when that happens, it's time you made a real change. Time you came up to the menthol magic of cool and felt that extra coolness in your throat. Your cigarette's not tasting cool enough unless you're smoking cool. You're not smoking cool enough till you come up to cool. Cool's menthol magic brightens taste, refreshing all day through. Feel extra coolness in your throat as cool comes through for you. Your cigarette's not tasting cool enough unless you're smoking cool. You're not smoking cool, cool, cool enough till you come up to cool. Fans get cool filter kings are cool without filter. Now the Mets hope to start fighting back into it as Joe Christopher leads off against Johnson. And the big side armor triggers a fastball in for a call strike. Sammy Drake on deck and then Jim Hickman. Warm up action continuing for the Mets as they get down toward the tail end of their batting order. He pops the curve ball up, out toward the mound. Coming up is the first baseman, Larker. He takes it for the out. Ball caught in fair territory, about halfway between home and first. One away and nobody on. The batter now will be Sammy Drake. Sammy single to right field in the fifth inning. His single to right scored Frank Thomas, who had reached on a walk. Now 
Now Ken Johnson out of his windup delivers. Right arm curve over a strike call. Five to two, Houston leading, last of the seventh inning. Taken low. One ball, one strike on switch hitting Sammy Drake. Bolly Hemus coaching at first and Cookie Lavagetto at third. He bunts it, but it's going foul down the third base line. Sammy Drake trying to start things off by bunting his way on base, but it goes foul. Count one ball and two strikes as Drake returns to the plate. Remember now, we have a doubleheader tomorrow night. It also is the only ladies' night of the year, so we hope you gals are planning to be here. Then action on Thursday afternoon starts at 1.30. The first order of business will be the completion of the suspended game, followed by the regularly scheduled game. One and two on Sammy Drake. The pitch by Johnson. Strike call. It caught the inside corner. Drake was thrilled by it. He was falling back to the plate, but it was over. That's strikeout number six for the veteran right-hander. Two outs and nobody on now in the home seventh. The batter is Jim Hickman. Jim 0 for 1, fouled out to Hal Smith, and then gave up his turn at bat in the fifth inning to help build a run. Ground ball, just foul, just foul, and what a play by Aspermani. He made a head-first dive across the line and managed to smother it. Bob Aspermani on Thursday with the business of the completion of the suspended game will find out whether or not he owns the National League record. Johnson Winding delivers the pitch. Right in there, a call strike on Jim Hickman. Jim hitting in 253. him out. Ken Johnson fanning Jim Hickman with a breaking ball. His seventh strike out of the game and he had a strong seventh inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. Now seven innings complete. The score, Houston five, New York two. Well, I'm sure as a memento of the return of the National League to New York this year, you want to be sure and get your copy of the new and completely revised New York Mets yearbook. You know, it contains the history of the many famous sporting events which took place right here in the polo grounds, boxing and football as well as baseball, biographies and photos of all the Met players, manager Casey Stengel, and the coaching staff, and pages of action pictures. It may be purchased here in the polo grounds or by mail. Simply write to Met's Yearbook, Polo Grounds, New York 39, New York. Enclosed 50 cents. This will be a souvenir that certainly will become a collector's item and one I'm sure you'll enjoy having in your sports library. Now the eighth inning. And Roman Mejias, who started off the four-run uprising in the seventh for Houston, will be leading off. Mejias has two for three. He tripled in the fifth inning and later scored. He came in to score on the well-executed suicide squeeze play. And then he singled to right center field, leading off the seventh. Nine men came up and four runs crossed the plate. Alvin Jackson, out of his land, delivers. He has to jump to get out of the way of that one. He made him wiggle. One ball and no strike. Now Jackson cranks up, delivers. A changeup is popped up. A fly ball to short left. It may drop. Out goes to Oh, what a kick! Oh, what a kick! Beautiful 
beautiful play by Elio Chacon. That fly ball was punched right down the left field line. And Elio, after a long and desperate run at the last moment, reached high and made a backhanded stab to take it right out of the air just when it seemed certain to drop for a base hit. Elio went a long way to get that from his shortstop position over to the line and pretty far down the line. One away and nobody on. The hitter is Hal Smith. Knee high pitch over for a call strike. Smith had a base hit to left field in participating in the four run seventh inning. Now Jackson looking in for his sign from Choo Choo. And the off speed pitch is a little bit high. One ball, one strike on Hal Smith. For the 45s, Scott Deal on the lines at first and Lemon Harris at third. Fastball outside. He started to go and then he held up. And now the count is two and one. Houston, five runs, ten hits, and no errors. New York, two runs, four hits, and one error. Now Jackson out of his windup delivers. Low and outside, ball three, a three and one count on Hal Smith. Three one delivery, foul ball. There's a hard drive that goes up against the auxiliary scoreboard in foul territory, so now the count is full, three and two. Jackson hasn't had his usual real good stuff going for him in this game tonight. He has struck out only one man. Now the payoff pitch to Hal Smith. Ball four. It just missed outside. He took a little bit off on the pitch. Second walk given up by Jackson. Now Ken Johnson will be coming on to hit. Twice in the game, Ken Johnson has laid down real good butts. Squeezed to run in in the fifth inning. Laid down another real good butt in the seventh inning, and Jackson fielded the ball, tried to make a play at third, but threw wide. He's around the bunt. And the pitch is outside. One ball and no strike. Now Jackson ready. Delivers to the plate. He bunts the ball back toward the mound. The play goes to first. Sammy Drake covering on Jackson's throw. So once again, Ken Johnson moves the runner along with a bunt. Two men down, a runner on second. Top of the eighth inning, and the leadoff batter and shortstop, Bob Lillis, comes up. Lillis has two hits and four times up. Doubled in the third inning, and bunted for a hit in the fifth inning. Now Jackson off the stretch, delivers. Ground ball, bounced to shortstop. Elio Chacon is up with it. He works the Thronberry, and the side is off. In the eighth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, one left on. Now at the end of seven and a half innings to score, the Houston Gold 45 five, and the New York Mets, two. So you know, popularity like Rheingold has doesn't just happen. It's a result of millions of people agreeing that Rheingold has what they want in beer. A refreshing difference they can recognize right off. And two little words tell you what that difference is. The two words, extra dry. Yes, sir, extra dry tells you Rheingold is beer as beer should taste. And it is the beer for you. Rheingold is a better beer because it's the dry beer. It's a wonderful beer for those wonderful days we all like to enjoy. 
You know, even the flavor has a sparkle to it. You'll find that out with your very first glass of Rheingold Extra Dry. Well, why not do it right now? Join the millions who say, My beer is Rheingold the Dry Beer. Yes, sir, think of Rheingold whenever you buy beer. Buy some today, tonight, tomorrow, or the first chance you get. Discover the difference the dry makes. Ask for Rheingold Extra Dry Beer. Now, Richie Ashburn has come out to bat for Al Jackson. Richie has been sidelined with a sore shoulder. He injured the shoulder in Houston. And he made a head-first dive across the line in deep left field trying to make a great play. He can swing the bat all right, but the problem is with throwing. He had x-rays taken of the shoulder, and they were negative. By the way, x-rays on Gene Woodley's right knee also proved to be negative. Gene was hit by a pitch. So Richie Ashburn is up against Ken Johnson. He runs up as if to bunt and does an offer. One ball and no strike. Richie, by the way, has gone 11 for 25 as a pinch hitter this year. As a pinch hitter, his batting average is 440. Johnson cranking up. Delivers to the plate. And this is over for a call strike. One ball, one strike. Richie hitting at 304 on the year. A smash it hard, right up the middle of base hit for Richie Ashburn. So Richie, the pinch hitter deluxe, single sharply to center field. hoping to close out another 300 season. He's been a great hitter over the years. Now Elio Chacon coming up at the top of the order. Richie's first year in the National League, he hit 333. A little bit low, it's ball one. Pitch on the way, bounced foul down the first baseline. Now Harry Kraft has given the bullpen a call, and the fireballing Don McMahon is up and working. One ball, one strike on Elio Chacon. A throw to first, it's not in time. Johnson off the stretch. Delivers a little bit low. Two and one now on Chico. We'll have a new pitcher in the game for the New York Mets as we go into the ninth inning. Right here, Ashburn is on first. Richie single to center hitting for Al Jackson. And the count on Elio Chico is two and one. Elio hitless from three times up. is line to left, struck out, fly to center. He... He doesn't offer it the fun. He just square around in the count two and two. Now Ken Johnson in the set position. Delivers to Chacon, a drive in the air to right field. Mejia slips, now comes in and makes the catch. Lamar Mejia slips, but righted himself in time to come in a couple of strides and take it for the out. One away and one on now in the last of the eighth inning. Here's 2-2 two -two Coleman. 2-2 two -two single his last time up. Well, with that speed of his, he let it get to be too much for him. He went too far around first and got hung up and tagged out in a rundown between first and second.
Here's the pitch on the way, and the knuckler is inside. One ball and no strike. The Mets have been out hit 10 to 5, Houston leading 5 to 2, and we're in the last of the eighth inning, the first game of a doubleheader. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. 2 2 came in the game, batting at 256. He now has hit safely in the last 11 ball games that he has started. Swing and a miss on another knuckleball. One and two to the count on Choo Choo Coleman. Now the stretch by Johnson. Long pause and time call. Real long pause taken in the set position that time by Johnson at the last moment. Chuchu asked for time, and it was granted by umpire Tony Benson. So it's one ball and two strikes. Felix Mantilla will be up next with Marv Thronberry. Ground ball slowly hit, charging in a second base from Al Patano. He plays to Larker in time, getting Coleman. And moving over to second on the play goes Richie Ashburn. And right now, before Felix Mantilla steps in to hit, We'll step out for station identification. A ten on your dial, WGY Schenectady. The time is one minute past eight. The temperature, 58 degrees. Bob Murphy with Ralph Kiner and Lindsey Nelson from the Polo Grounds. Mets trying to get it going here in the last of the eighth inning. Ashburn on second, two men down. Mantilla reached base when hit by a pitch his last time up. Knuckleball outside, one ball and no strike. Now Johnson ready. And Felix pops the ball high in the air. A foul ball chasing it as Hal Smith back toward the visiting dugout. And he has it for the out. Bad retired in the last of the eighth inning. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left on. So, eight innings complete. The score, the Houston Colt 45, 5, and the New York Mets, 2. Fans, we'd like to remind you that tickets are now on sale for the New York Titans American Football League home opener with the Denver Bears. The Titans will be opening on September 30th here at the Polo Ground. And tickets for all future Titan home games are on sale at all New York Mets ticket outlets. That means the advanced sale window here at the Polo Ground Grand Central Station near the 42nd and Vanderbilt ramp and the Long Island waiting room of the Penn Station. You know, my beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. How about you? Just about enough time now to open up or order up a Rheingold before we get going again. And as we get going, we move along to the ninth inning. The New York Mets will have a new pitcher in the ball game, and here to tell you all about it is Ralph Kiner. Okay, Bob, it'll be Craig Anderson with a record of three wins and 17 losses. Craig's wins all coming in relief. Big strong arm right-hander from Washington, D.C. And he'll be working against the Houston Colts 45, second, third, and fourth batters in the lineup. It'll be Joe Malpatano, who has three for four, Jim Pendleton, who has one for four, and Norm Rocker, who has one for four. This will be Anderson's 46th appearance of the year. He has pitched in 118 and one-third innings, giving up 140 hits, walking 57, and striking out 60. He has an ERA of 5.72. The Chicago Cubs defeated St. Louis 4-3 in a day game. The winning pitcher was Paul Tost, losing pitcher Harvey Branch. The two pitchers were exchanged by their individual ball clubs just previous to their starting assignment. Cincinnati will be playing Pittsburgh. It'll be Jim O'Toole against Earl Francis. Los Angeles scheduled against Milwaukee. That game to get underway at 9 o'clock. San Francisco and Philadelphia not scheduled. 
Now we're all set to go as Craig Anderson goes to work and his first pitch is a strike call. Pitching to Joe Malfitano, right hand batting second baseman. Joe, three for four for the night. He has driven in one run and he has two doubles. And he looks at a pitch outside for ball one. One ball, one strike. The American League action shows New York and Washington. Ralph Terry against Tom Cheney. Cheney, his last time out, struck out 21 batters in 16 innings. Detroit defeated Minnesota 2-1 as Jim Bunning picked up the win. There's a the ball hit down the short to Elia Chacon. He drops the ball. Ball bounces off his arm and it'll go as an error. That is the second error in the game. And Joe Amalfitano is on for the fourth time and five times at bat. And that brings up Jim Pendleton, who is one for four. In the Detroit-Minnesota game, Jim Bunning pitched a four-hitter. He was helped out by Terry Fox in the ninth inning. The losing pitcher was Kralik. He went all the way, giving up six base hits. Boston is scheduled against Chicago and Cleveland against Kansas City and Baltimore against Los Angeles to complete the American League action. Now the first pitch to Pendleton. It's bunted out towards the third base side. A good bunt. Anderson picks it up. Throws the first base to Sammy Drake in time. It's a sacrifice bunt. Moving on down to second base on the play is Joe Malfadano. One to four for your score. No time at bat. And with one out, the batter will be Norm Locker. Norm one for four with two runs batted in. Both 45 scored four runs in the top of the seventh inning to take the lead by a score of five to two. The Mets had taken the lead away from the Colt 45s in the bottom half of the fifth inning when they scored two runs to take it at 2-1. Right now, it's five runs, ten hits for the Colts. Two runs and five hits for the Mets with Norm Walker batting. Left hand batting first baseman. And Craig Anderson with a long look at the sign. Into the set position. A look at second base and the pitch to the plate is outside and low for ball one. Al Jackson, the starting pitcher, won eight innings, gave up five runs. And he was charged with ten base hits. He struck out only one, walked two. Anderson now up on top. And back to the plate. It's inside for ball two. Two balls and no strikes with one man out. Top of the ninth inning. The score five to two in favor of the Colts. The first game of two games here tonight. And the first game of a five-game series. The Twilight Nighter tomorrow night. Game time at six o'clock for the first game. Next pitch is a curveball outside to Norm Locker, so the count moves to three balls and no strikes. On deck batter is Carl Warwick, right-hand batting center fielder. Locker getting the sign from Harry Kraft, coaching at third base as to whether or not he'll be hitting away. Harry, the manager of the Colt 45. Also coaches on the line. Now the 3-0 pitch. Larker takes low at ball four. So Anderson walks his first man. That is walk number three. Picked up by the 45s here tonight. Two coming off Al Jackson. And it puts runners at first and second with one out and brings up Carl Warwick. Carl is 0 for three with a walk to go along. And Anderson now to the plate with a fastball that's low. One ball and no strike. Colt 45, five runs on ten hits. The Mets have two runs on five. Now Anderson back to work. And the 1-0 pitch. Hit hard on the ground down to Mantia. He bobbles the ball, picks it up, goes to throw to second base, and held the ball. So it's all runners safe. The bases are now loaded. And it scored an error on Felix Mangia. That ball was hit sharply. Felix took the ball in a half off, then dropped it. Reached down, picked it up, started to go to second base. No one there. He had no play. And by that time, all the runners had moved up. So the bases are loaded now with two out, and there it goes to Mangia, and it brings up Roman Mejia's right-hand batting right fielder.
Maias is two for four, and he takes low for ball one. Two. Moving up to third base, Norm Larker, and on down to second base from first is Bob Aspermani. It's the wild strip pitch. And the Colts now with six runs on 11 hits. The Mets have two runs on five. And the count is one ball and no strikes to Roman Mejiz. Changes to two and all. And Anderson now into the windup with runners at second and third. And the pitch back to the plate is swung on a miss for strike one. Two balls and one strike. Call 45 with runs in the fifth, seventh, and ninth innings. The lead five, six to two. Now Anderson with a curveball has popped off the hands. And it's a chance for Chuchu Coleman. And he makes the catch to retire the side. But in the inning, one run crossed home plate. Without a base hit, there were two errors in the inning, and two men were left. And the score at the end of eight and one half innings of play. The Colts 45 6, the New York Mets 2. Now, a popular question put to music by none other than Guy Lombardo. Who is the girl who? Be the girl Miss Ryan goes 63. She'd be a beaut, she'd be really cute, the only girl for me. Carol Loretta, Eileen Beverly, is true or Chris the one girl who will be that famous girl, that charming girl Miss Ryan goes 63. This is Guy Lombardo. Who will be Miss Ryan Gold 1963? Your vote may decide who will have the fame and fortune of representing Ryan Gold Extra Dry, the beer that gets most New Yorkers' votes. So vote now. They're all so charming, I'm in such a fix. Guess I'll just have to vote for all six. Who is the girl who be the girl Miss Ryan Gold 63? It's the last half of the ninth inning. The Mets need four to tie, and Mars Goldenberry leads off, and he takes the curveball inside for ball one from Ken Johnson. Johnson now, through eight innings, has given up only two runs. He has allowed five hits while striking out six and walking two. It'll be Thronberry, Thomas, and Christopher, and the next pitch is hit on the ground down to second base, picked up by Amal Fatano on the second half to throw the first in time for out number one. So Ken Johnson here in the bottom half of the ninth and a four-run lead his way has one out of three and the batter now is Frank Thomas. Frank has walked twice and hit into a fourth play. He is 0 for 1. Also has scored one of the two runs in the game picked up by the Mets. Right hand batting left fielder. And now Ken Johnson, the right-hander, with his first pitch to Frank. A check in the swing, but not in time for strike one. Al Jackson, the starting pitcher. The pitcher of record in the ball game for the Mets on the losing side. Ken Johnson has gone all the way. And now Johnson, after starting to go into the windup, stops as time is called, and Frank Thomas steps out of the batter's box. One man down, bottom half of the ninth. The score is six to two in favor of the Colts. Johnson with a let up. It's swung on a miss, strike two. Johnson with the knuckleball has been very effective. His last time out was a real heartbreaker for him. He pitched a one nothing game and lost it on three hits to the Dodgers. There's a let up for strike three. A knuckleball. Thompson, Thomas Powell tipped the ball. It was caught by the catcher, Hal Smith. And two men are now down. That's strikeout number seven for Ken Johnson. And it brings up Joe Christopher, the last hope for the Mets. 
Joe has one hit and three times out. That came on a bump. Right hand batting right fielder. Looking now at Lavagetto, the third base coach for a hitter take sign. On deck batter is Sammy Drake. Two men out. The score six to two in favor of the Colts. Bottom half of the ninth. And the first pitch is outside for ball one. Christopher shortening up as Zodabun took low. One ball, no strike. Now Johnson back to work, and the 1-0 pitch is high for ball two. So the count now, two balls and no strike. Mets need four to shy. Here's the windup and the 2-0 pitch. Christopher takes all the way. It's strike one. Two balls and one strike. Christopher is batting over 333 for the last month. He's been a hot batter. Now the 2-1 pitch hits foul down to Cookie Lavagetto in the third base coaching box. Cookie takes a look at the ball, throws it to third base umpire Frank Shikori. Shikori looks at it, throws it to the third baseman, Bob Aspermani. Aspermani takes a look at it, throws it to the pitcher. So the count now, two balls and two strikes with two men out. And the 2-2 pitch by Johnson, a curve ball that's inside and high for ball three. Full count now, Joe Christopher with Sammy Drake, the on-deck batter. Ken Johnson with a long look at the signs, now into the windup. And the 3-2 pitch, a curve hit sharply in the left field, a base hit. So Joe Christopher keeps the inning alive by singling the left field with two men out. It brings up Sammy Drake. Sammy with a base hit and a run batted in in the fifth inning. One for three in the game. Left hand batting second baseman. Hit number six off Ken Johnson in the game. Colts have a total of ten hits with their six runs. Mets have two runs. Here's the first pitch to Drake. It's foul away for strike one. High fastball. Drake late on the swing. 0 and 1 with two men down. Christopher at first base not being held on by Norm Marker. The one strike pitch to knuckleball that's outside. One ball, one strike. First game of two, another game to follow in about a half an hour after this one is over. Now the 1-1 one -one pitch, a knuckleball that's inside for ball two. Two balls and one strike. Drake shortening up as though to push a bunt down toward third. Defending there, Bob Astromani. He's right on top, about even with the bat. He's alive for the occasion. Two balls and one strike as Johnson goes back on top and comes back to the plate. And the fastball to the plate is fouled away to move the count to two and two. Two balls and two strikes. At Washington, Mickey Mantle has just homered with two men on to give the Yankees a 3 0 lead with the Yanks still batting in the top of the first inning. Ralph Terry against Tom Keeney. Well, Mantle, his 28th home run of the year. Now the 2-2 pitch, a curveball swung on a miss for strike three, and that ends the ball game. Strikeout number eight to retire the side, and the Houston Colts 45s win the first game of this series. In the inning for the Mets, no runs on one hit. There were no errors, and one man was left on. And the final score of the game, the Colts 45-6, the New York Mets 2. Don't forget that after this series, which will end on Thursday, the Chicago Cubs will come in for the final series of the year. They'll be playing a night game on the 21st, Friday night, a day game on Saturday of the 22nd, and a day game on the final day of the season here at the Polo Grounds on Sunday the 23rd. They'll be bringing in Ken Hubbs, the fielding sensation for the Chicago Cubs, who set a new major league record for fielding as a second baseman. Also, Ernie Banks, two-time most valuable player in the major leagues, 
along with George Altman and many other fine stars. Of course, this will be your last chance to probably see the Mets or see any baseball, for that matter, here in the Polo Grounds as the Mets will be playing over at Flushy Meadows, commencing with the 1963 serve. You know, the pipe tobacco for relaxing in the man's world is the Walter Raleigh. Whether you're out at the ballpark or listening to our broadcast at home, you'll enjoy the water from the very first pipe ball. Here's a tobacco with real aroma and a good natural flavor. The Walter's flavor comes from a special blend of choice Kentucky Burley tobaccos, extra aged to their peaks of mildness. The Walter Raleigh is known as the brand of grand aroma. It's kept fresh, too. 44% fresher in the new pouch pack. You'll like Sir Walter's pouch pack. And when you're at home or at the office, you'll like Sir Walter Raleigh in the exclusive knob top vacuum pack canister. These humidor canisters keep Sir Walter Raleigh's factory fresh. Get Sir Walter Raleigh in the new pouch pack or in the exclusive knob top canister. Large economy size or half canister. Sir Walter Raleigh, smells grand, packed right, smoke sweet, can't bite. So relax in a man's world with the Waller Raleigh, the quality pipe tobacco. Well, Ken Johnson went all the way for the fifth time this year to give the Houston Colts 45 their first victory in this five-game series. For the Colts, six runs on ten hits. They made no errors and left nine men on. For the Mets, two runs on a total of six hits. They made three errors in the ball game, And they also left nine men on. Johnson, the winning pitcher now with a record of seven wins and 15 losses. The losing pitcher was Al Jackson, and that was his 18th loss of the year. Make that his 19th loss of the year. He has won a total of eight baseball games. Jackson went eight innings, gave up five runs. He allowed a total of 10 hits in the game, and he struck out one while walking two. He was relieved in the ninth inning after being taken out for a pinch hitter by Craig Anderson, and Craig gave up one run without allowing a base hit. There were two errors in that inning. Also a walk and a wild pitch. The wild pitch allowing Joe Malfatano to score from third base. For Ken Johnson, he worked nine innings, gave up the two runs, and allowed six hits. He struck out eight batters in the ball game and walked two. And the Colt 45 now have taken the lead here in the Polo Grounds on the yearly series. By winning the ball game, they have now won three of the five games played. At Houston, they have won seven of eight played there. And on the season, they stand with 10 wins of the 13 games played. For the Mets, it was their 54th loss in the Polo Grounds and their 112th loss of the year. And Houston now away has won their 46th game. And their overall record is 56 wins with... 57 wins, I'm sorry, with a total of 91 losses on the season. The big hitter for the Colt 45, Joe Malfitano, he was on base four of the five times that he came up. He had a total of three hits, including two doubles. Also chipping in with a long triple, Roman Mejia, and a single to go along, and Norm Walker drove in two runs with a single. For the Mets, their base hits came by Keaton Coleman, single to right field in the sixth inning, also picking up a hit, Mark Drone there in the second inning. And Joe Christopher had two for four to increase his batting average. Sammy Drake chipped in one hit to drive in one run, and the other run was driven in by Al Jackson when he grounded out to the first baseman. As a pinch hitter, Richie Ashman continued to hit well as he came in to pick up a single. To last